Hi my friends, welcome to the channel English Professionally and this video is very important for your speaking, yeah? It's called how to think in English rightly. So really it's very important to think in English rightly, okay? So it means that many people think in English but they do it wrongly so and they don't have a good result. Okay, so really I've come to the conclusion that I need to think in English to improve it, yeah, to make it better greatly and in a short period of time. In a short period of time means soon, as soon as possible. That sounds great or it's a good idea. I also believe or I also think that we need to think in English to make a rapid progress in English. Rapid means fast, to mean to make a rapid progress in English, but this phrase is very natural. Rapid progress in English. What varies you? Yeah, the structure is correct. So what varies you? So what's the problem? What varies you? Frankly, or honestly, I try to think in English, but I'm not quite sure. It means that I'm not really sure that I do everything correctly or I do everything rightly, really. How to think in English rightly? What can you advise or what can you recommend? Well, to answer this question, I need more information to understand how you do it. No problem. I'll give you more details, more details or more information. So, to be frank, or to be honest, I don't have much time and I usually think in English 20 minutes a day. Sometimes it can be more. I try to translate my thoughts from my mother tongue into English. Yeah, from my own language into English. We say translate from one language into another one. So, I try to use simple phrases. I feel real progress, so good progress or real progress. Is it what you want to hear from me? Okay, so is it this information? Excellent. Thank you. I got your point. I see it's your great dream to speak English fluently. So it's your great dream, you really want it, yeah, to speak English fluently. And you try to use more advanced and effective methods. More advanced means better and modern methods and effective methods which really work. But I can tell you one thing directly. So, so, or I'll be straight, I'll be straight, I'll tell you one thing directly. What is it? You need to think in English rightly or correctly. I try to think in English what's wrong. So, what's wrong or what's the problem? What you do has nothing to do with highly effective methods of learning English. So what you do, it means it's not about effective. It has nothing to do with, it means it's not about, or it isn't about highly effective, highly effective or very effective methods of learning English. So it isn't effective, it isn't so effective. Okay, so you make progress, yeah, we say you make progress, and we won't deny it. So we won't say, no, okay, you don't make progress, it's bad, no, we won't say it. But it's 10% of what you can do. So, you know, maximum is 100% and it's 10% of what you can do, okay? You know, I feel great progress and that's enough for me. I have a limited amount of free time. It means that I don't have much free time. Obviously, or clearly, I can't learn English all day and think in English all day. Please, understand that I have so many cares, duties and responsibilities, okay? It means that you have a lot of things which you need to do, really. You can't even imagine it. I have so many things to do, yeah? A nice phrase, so you can say, I have so many things to do, or so many things which I need to do. So a nice phrase, things to do, okay? I can say, I have a lot of things to do. I have so many things to do, which I need to do, really. So many that you can't imagine. 
Okay, so don't take it close to your heart. Don't take it close to your heart. It means don't worry, relax, it's okay. I generally understand all these things take place in your life. I generally understand means I really understand, so I truly understand. All these things uh, take place, it means they exist in our life. So they happen, these things exist in our life, it's true. I just want you to pay attention to a couple of facts. Yeah, I just want you to pay attention. Pay attention means that I just want you to look at or pay attention to a couple of facts, couple of means two facts, which can help you improve your English greatly and reach new heights. New heights means reach a new level, so a more advanced level, okay? Uh, okay, okay, I'm listening to you. Please be serious and don't be skeptical. Don't be skeptical means, okay, don't think it's bad. So first of all, you need to listen to this information and then you'll decide whether it's bad or good, okay? So many people look for this information, look for, they try to find it, and they are ready to pay a great deal of money. A great deal of money means lots of money. But they can't find it. I mean, they can't find this information. Okay? Can I continue? Yes, please. There are several big problems. There are several or there are some big problems. But the main one or the main problem, the main one or the main problem is that, is that you don't think in English. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You just translate. Is it bad? Not bad, but not perfect. So it means but not very good. Okay, not excellent. Your task is to be able to think only in English. So to be able to think, it's, you know, it means that you need to think only in English. You should try to do it only in English. So without, without your mother tongue. Okay, good. How should I think in English? Can you describe it? Okay, and you describe it, it means uh, actually how does it happen? How does it happen? Okay, so what you have is the following. So you have this thing, yeah? So for example, you see a car and first you have this idea in your mind, in your mother tongue, so in your own language, and then you translate and you do it all the time. So first you say it in your mother tongue, you translate, into English and you do it all the time okay so you do it all the time so and uh, as you understand it isn't so good it isn't so good right you know it's a good speaking practice it's good not bad not terrible yeah but it can't be go it can't be called thinking in English it can't be called yes it's passive voice it can't be called thinking in English no when you see something you need to have this word only in English at once, it means immediately. So you see a car and you have this idea in English, okay, so I see a car, this is a car or something like that. So without translation, it's a very important thing, really? Certainly, or means of course, let me add one more thing. It means that I want to add one more thing. When you have some ideas in your head, you need to have them only in English, without translation. This practice can be called thinking in English, rightly. But that's not all. Let me, let me finish, okay? I understand how can I achieve it, so how can I get it? What else do I need to do? As I understand, yeah, or as I see, you choose a certain time or during the day and try to think in English. But in fact, it isn't so effective. I mean that you choose just uh, one interval, yeah? So split your day or divide your day, yeah? A certain time, just split your day or divide your day into several parts, into some parts or intervals, intervals. So what I mean is that it's better to think in English, it's better to think maybe for five minutes. But when you do it more regularly, 
yeah, so you, you know, that you say 20 minutes, yeah, just um, one time a day, it's, it isn't enough, it's, yeah, it isn't enough, so you need to do it more regularly, okay? So, isn't it too much? Isn't it too much? So, when you do it more regularly, I think if you want more progress, it's okay, so don't miss every opportunity to think in English. So, in other words, you need to take every opportunity to think in English. Well, well, I'll try. I see your confusion. And what worries you? So, confusion, it means that you feel confused. So, I'll try, but maybe you still don't understand how you can do it. You still have problems. And it, it you feel worried. So, what worries you? I'll answer your question. You are worried that you'll be only translating and using your mother tongue too. You can't do it only in English, right? You read my thoughts. It means that you really understand what I think. You read me like an open book. So, so everything is clear. So, I have some ideas in my mind and uh, everything is clear for you. Everything is clear for you. Please continue. Yeah, nice phrases. Oh, please continue, okay? I feel that you know my problems better than me and most importantly, it means, and the most important thing is that you have a clear idea how I can solve it. Okay, so how can I solve it? So what can I, what I can do? Okay, your main problem is that you don't do it regularly. You need to do it uh, as often as possible, so regularly. So as regular as regularly as you can and you need to translate first, yeah. So you asked me about translation and it isn't bad you need to translate first. It's the first step. When will I be able to think only to think only in English? It's possible if you have lots of daily and hourly translation practice. So you need to have lots of daily practice. It means every day and hourly. Hourly. It means every hour. But maybe for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, but every hour translation practice. If you can't think in English, it means that you need more regular practice, that you don't have enough practice. So you have practice, but little practice, not enough practice, okay? Only this way. More practice, daily and hourly translation practice. Only this way. And there is one more thing that can't be left unnoticed, that can't be ignored, that can't be ignored. So I, I know that uh, people often fail to notice it, but we need to pay attention to this fact, okay? So what is it? Okay, what is it? Most students think in English, but they use very unnatural phrases. Very unnatural. Yeah, not really good. And so native speakers don't, uh, you know, speak this way. And clumsy sentences. Clumsy means also unnatural. So they think that it's right. Maybe other people will understand, but it isn't uh, correct. So it isn't, uh, I mean, it isn't spoken this way in America or England, okay? So you need to think like a native speaker. It's the next level, the next step, okay? So how can I get this skill? You know, you can acquire this skill or you can get this skill. After the first two steps, to have it, you need to improve your English in general and have an advanced level in English. Otherwise, you'll be thinking in English while speaking unnaturally and making lots of mistakes in grammar and vocabulary, which are not so evident, really. So, students uh, make lots of mistakes, and the, the problem is that they don't realize that they make these mistakes. So, you need to have an advanced level, so let's try to improve your level in general, so we have lots of video courses, yeah, which can really help you. And uh, the next thing, yeah, you need to try to think in English, and you need to have these uh, practice, so as often as you can. Okay, so thank you very much. My friends, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Okay, thank you for your support. Thank you. See you. Hi, my friends. Welcome to the channel English Professionally. And this video is very important for your speaking. Yeah, it's called How to Think in English Rightly. So really, it's very important to think in English rightly. Okay, so it means that many people think in English, but they do it wrongly. So and they don't have a good result. Okay, so really, I've come to the conclusion that I need to think in English to improve it, yeah, to make it better, uh, greatly, and in a short period of time. In a short period of time means soon, as soon as possible. 
That sounds great, or it's a good idea. I also believe, or I also think, that we need to think in English to make a rapid progress in English. Rapid means fast, to, mean, to make a rapid progress in English, but this phrase is very natural. Rapid progress in English. What worries you? Yeah, the structure is correct. So, what worries you? So, what's the problem? What worries you? Frankly, or honestly, I try to think in English, but I'm not quite sure. It means that I'm not really sure that I do everything correctly or I do everything rightly. Really, how to think in English rightly? What can you advise or what can you recommend? Well, to answer this question, I need more information to understand how you do it. No problem. I'll give you more details, more details or more information. So, to be frank or to be honest, I don't have much time and I usually think in English 20 minutes a day. Sometimes it can be more. I try to translate my thoughts from my mother tongue into English. Yeah, from my own language into English. We say translate from one language into another one. So, I try to use simple phrases. I feel real progress. So, good progress or real progress. Is it what you want to hear from me? Okay, so, is it this information? Excellent. Thank you. I got your point. I see it's your great dream to speak English fluently. So, it's your great dream. You really want it yeah, to speak English fluently. And you try to use more advanced and effective methods. More advanced means better and modern methods and effective methods which really work. But I can tell you one thing directly. So, so or I'll be straight, I'll be straight, I'll tell you one thing directly. What is it? You need to think in English rightly or correctly. I try to think in English what's wrong. So, what's wrong or what's the problem? What you do has nothing to do with highly effective methods of learning English. So, what you do, it means it's not about effective. It has nothing to do with, it means it's not about, or it isn't about highly effective, highly effective or very effective methods of learning English. So, it isn't effective, it isn't so effective. Okay, so you make progress, yeah, I would say you make progress, and we won't deny it. So, we won't say, no, okay, you don't make progress, it's bad, no, we won't say it, but it's 10% of what you can do. So, you know, maximum is 100% and it's 10% of what you can do, okay? You know, I feel great progress and that's enough for me. I have a limited amount of free time, it means that I don't have much free time. Obviously, or clearly, I can't learn English all day and think in English all day. Please, understand that I have so many cares, duties and responsibilities, okay? It means that you have a lot of things which you need to do, really. You can't even imagine it. I have so many things to do, yeah? A nice phrase, so you can say, I have so many things to do or so many things which I need to do. So, a nice phrase, things to do, okay? Okay, so I have a lot of things to do. I have so many things to do, which I need to do, really. So many that you can't imagine. Okay, so don't take it close to your heart. Don't take it close to your heart. It means don't worry, relax, it's okay. I generally understand all these things take place in your life. I generally understand means I really understand, so I truly understand. All these things uh, take place, it means they exist in our life. So, they happen, these things exist in our life, it's true. I just want you to pay attention to a couple of facts. Yeah, I just want you to pay attention. Pay attention means that I just want you to look at or pay attention to a couple of facts, couple of means two facts, which can help you 
improve your English greatly and reach new heights. New heights means reach a new level, so a more advanced level. Okay? Uh, okay, okay, I'm listening to you. Please be serious and don't be skeptical. Don't be skeptical means, okay, don't think it's bad. So first of all, you need to listen to this information and then you'll decide whether it's bad or good. Okay? So many people look for this information, look for, they try to find it and they are ready to pay a great deal of money. A great deal of money means lots of money. But they can't find it. I mean, they can't find this information. Okay? Can I continue? Yes, please. There are several big problems. There are several or there are some big problems. But the main one or the main problem, the main one or the main problem is that, is that you don't think in English. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You just translate. Is it bad? Not bad, but not perfect. So it means but not very good. Okay, not excellent. Your task is to be able to think only in English. So to be able to think, it's, you know, it means that you need to think only in English. You should try to do it only in English. So without, without your mother tongue. Okay, good. How should I think in English? Can you describe it? Okay. Can you describe it? It means uh, actually how does it happen? How does it happen? Okay. So what you have is the following. So you have this thing, yeah? So for example, you see a car and first you have this idea in your mind, in your mother tongue, so in your own language. And then you translate and you do it all the time. So first you say it in your mother tongue, you translate into English and you do it all the time. Okay, so you do it all the time. So, and uh, as you understand, it isn't so good. It isn't so good. Right. You know, it's a good speaking practice. It's good, not bad, not terrible. Yeah, but it can't be go. Uh, it can't be called thinking in English. It can't be called. Yes, it's passive voice. It can't be called thinking in English. No. When you see something, you need to have this word only in English at once. It means immediately. So you see a car and you have this idea in English. Okay, so I see a car, this is a car or something like that. So without translation. It's a very important thing. Really? Certainly. Or means of course. Let me add one more thing. It means that I want to add one more thing. When you have some ideas in your head, you need to have them only in English, without translation. This practice can be called thinking in English, rightly. But that's not all. Let me, let me finish, okay? I understand how can I achieve it, so how can I get it? What else do I need to do? As I understand, yeah, or as I see, you choose a certain time or during the day and try to think in English but in fact it isn't so effective I mean that you choose just uh, one interval yeah so split your day or divide your day yeah a certain time just split your day or divide your day into several parts into some parts or intervals intervals so what I mean is that it's better to think in English it's better to think maybe for five minutes but when you do it more regularly yeah so you, you know that you say 20 minutes yeah just um, one time a day it's it isn't enough it's, yeah it isn't enough so you need to do it more regularly okay so isn't it too much isn't it too much so when you do it more regularly i think if you want more progress it's okay so don't miss every opportunity to think in English. So in other words, you need take, to take every opportunity to think in English. Well, well, I'll try. I see your confusion and what worries you. So confusion, it means that you feel confused. So I'll try, but maybe you still don't understand how you can do it. You still have problems. 
and it uh, you feel worried. So what worries you? I'll answer your question. You are worried that you'll be only translating and using your mother tongue too. You can't do it only in English, right? You read my thoughts. It means that you really understand what I think. You read me like an open book. So so everything is clear. So I have some ideas in my mind and uh, everything is clear for you. Everything is clear for you. Please continue. Yeah, nice phrases. Oh, please uh, continue, okay? I feel that you know my problem is better than me and most importantly. It means, and the most important thing is that you have a clear idea how I can solve it. Okay, so how can I solve it? So what can I, what I can do? Okay, your main problem is that you don't do it regularly. You need to do it uh, as often as possible. So regularly, so as regular as regularly as you can, and you need to translate first. Yeah. So you asked me about translation, and it isn't bad. You need to translate first. It's the first step. When will I be able to think only, to think only in English? It's possible if you have lots of daily and hourly translation practice. So you need to have lots of daily practice. It means every day and hourly. Hourly. It means every hour. Not maybe for five minutes, ten minutes, but every hour translation practice. If you can't think in English, it means that you need more regular practice, that you don't have enough practice. So you have practice, but little practice, not enough practice. Okay? Only this way. More practice daily and hourly translation practice only this way and there is one more thing that can't be left unnoticed that can't be ignored that can't be ignored so I, I know that uh, people often fail to notice it but we need to pay attention to this fact okay so what is it okay what is it most students think in English but they use very unnatural phrases very unnatural yeah not really good and so native speakers don't, uh, you know, speak this way. And clumsy sentences. Clumsy means also unnatural. So they think that it's right. Maybe other people will understand, but it isn't uh, correct. So it isn't, uh, I mean, it isn't spoken this way in America or England, okay? So you need to think like a native speaker. It's the next level, the next step, okay? So how can I get this skill? You know, you can acquire this skill or you can get this skill. After the first two steps, to have it, you need to improve your English in general and have an advanced level in English. Otherwise, you'll be thinking in English while speaking unnaturally and making lots of mistakes in grammar and vocabulary which are not so evident. Really. So, students uh, make lots of mistakes and the, the problem is that they don't realize that they make these mistakes. So, you need to have an advanced level. So, try to improve your level in general. So, we have lots of video courses. Yeah which can really help you. And uh, the next thing, you need to try to think in English and you need to have this uh, practice so as often as you can. Okay, so thank you very much, my friends. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Okay, thank you for your support. Thank you. See you. Hi, my friends. Welcome to the channel English Professionally. And this course is for you. So how to learn English speaking easily, but not just English speaking easily, but to have an advanced level, okay? So this video is really important if you want to have an advanced level in speaking. Okay, thank you very much, my friends, for your support, for your likes and shares, okay? So are you ready? I hope so. You know, I'm absolutely exhausted. So I'm absolutely exhausted means I am very, very tight. I am ready to give up learning English completely so give up means stop so i'm ready to stop learning english completely means fully completely i learn english a lot a lot a lot so every day for many hours i mean that i try to improve my grammar and increase my vocabulary I mean that a nice phrase it means that so I want to tell you that I want to tell you that I want to say that I mean that I try to improve my grammar so I try to make my grammar better and increase my vocabulary and to make my vocabulary larger so I want to know 
more words, more English words. Okay? It's really good. What's the problem? What's the problem? It isn't bad, but it isn't enough. What do you mean exactly? So, if you want, you know, more information or if you want some explanations, we can ask, so what do you mean? Or what do you mean exactly? Listen, my idea is quite simple or my idea is very simple, it's very simple. I try to speak English when I have this opportunity or when I have this chance. But I do feel my vocabulary is really poor and I use very simple grammar. I do feel means I really feel. So if you say I do feel, it means I really feel. If you say I do understand, it means I really understand. My vocabulary is really poor. It means it isn't rich, it's bad. So I know few English words and phrases. And I use very simple grammar. It means just basic tenses and structures, okay? Well, well, as far as I understand, it means that I understand it this way. Your English level in general isn't lower than intermediate now. But you speak like a student who has an elementary level, right? So, level in general, it means, uh, you know, so all your skills, writing, reading, listening, isn't lower. It means it's higher than intermediate, so intermediate or higher. But you speak like a student has an elementary level, so just basic speaking skills, right? That's it. That's it means, yeah, that's right, that's it. I perfectly understand that it always takes place and I can do nothing about it. So I perfectly understand, it means that I understand it really well, I understand it very clearly, that it always takes place, it always happens, and I can do nothing about it. It means that I can't change it, I can't change it. So I have this problem and I don't know what to do, okay? So I feel really angry, I feel really angry. Please, calm down. So, calm down or cool down, so please don't worry, relax. I'll tell you what you need to become an advanced English speaker. Yeah, so it's, you know, when you have great speaking skills. When you speak English very naturally like a native speaker. You are right for 100% or you are absolutely right that you need to focus on speaking or you need to concentrate on speaking so it's the most important thing don't think only you experience this kind of problem so experience yeah means have not only you not only you have this kind of problem so most people most people experience this kind of problem most people have this kind of problem Really, most people face it, so most, most people meet this situation in their life. The thing is that few people do realize it. The thing is, it, or the problem is that, so when you want to give more details, you can use this phrase. The thing is that few people, so not many people, do realize it means really really realize it, really understand it, so and it's not so good. Yeah, it's a pity. Uh, could you say it more clearly? Could you say it more clearly? Okay, I'll clarify my point. I'll clarify my point. So, I'll try to make it more clear. I'll try to say it so as clearly as possible. Okay? So, most people want to speak English fluently, but they don't really know what it is. It is often believed, or people often believe, that if you can say something in English, if you can express your point of view somehow, so express your point of view, it means when you can say what you think, yeah? 
So, or make yourself understood, it's a good phrase, when you can make yourself understood, it means that uh, when other people can understand you, so maybe your English isn't uh, so good, but other people can understand you, and it's good, it's enough for communication, for conversation. You're a fluent English speaker, you're a fluent English speaker, okay? You're a fluent English speaker. I have always, I have, I have also thought so, I have also thought so. Okay, okay, so, no, it isn't true, no, it isn't true, it means it isn't right, it's a myth, it means it isn't real, it's unreal, it's an illusion, it's an illusion, it's just in our imagination, but, I mean, the real thing is different, so, real life is different, it's just the first step to complete fluency in English. Yeah, it is the first step to complete fluency in English. Not just basic fluency, but complete fluency or full. Yeah, it means full to complete fluency in English. So when you are an advanced English speaker. And I will tell you how you can sort out all these problems and reach another level of speaking. How you can sort out or how you can solve all these problems and reach another level of speaking or have another level of speaking yeah to speak english really well not just basic and uh, not just basic speaking okay so i really feel excited so you say i feel excited or i am excited so you're full of enthusiasm yeah and you want to know more information more details what do you what do i need to do first to learn english speaking and become a confident and fluent English speaker. So, what is, I mean, a confident English speaker? It's when you speak without mistakes, when you understand that you do it, you speak English without mistakes, and when your grammar is also very good and fluent, you can speak English fast. Well, first of all, you need to understand the difference between fluent speech for elementary level and advanced level. Okay, I think that's clear. You need to understand this difference. It's so it's really so important. Okay. What's the difference? I really want to know it. As it has already been said, if you can say what you want using simple words and phrases, it's really good. My congratulations. Nevertheless, it's a basic level of fluency. Okay? So, as it has already been said, it means that I have already said it. So, if you want to, uh, to say what you want and you use, and you use simple words and phrases, it's really good. So, my congratulations. It's a very good thing. Nevertheless, nevertheless means but. It's a basic level of fluency. It's just the first level. It's just the first level, the first step. Let me interrupt you. That means that I want to interrupt you. Can I do it? It's okay. Okay. So, do you mean that most people can speak only basic English? Do you mean or do you want to say that most people can speak only basic English? Not only this. The problem is that most people know some phrases uh, for traveling, for example. Yeah, a nice phrase. So, the problem is that, the thing is that, the fact is that, so when you want to give more details and explanations, explanations. So, most people know some phrases for traveling, for example, like check in, check out, and so on, and they can't speak English building their own phrases in different situations, building or making up their own or their phrases in different situations, in different contexts. Just imagine that you need to talk about the current political regime in your country or healthcare problems in your country. Will you be able to talk about it spontaneously and naturally? Okay? 
So really, imagine this situation that you need to talk about the current political regime. It means um, so you have this political regime now in your country, or maybe some problems, healthcare problems connected with health or medicine in your country. So will you be able? So you know that will be able. It uh, can in the future. Will you be able to talk about it spontaneously? So will it be possible for you? So will you talk to? Uh, yeah, will you talk to someone about it spontaneously and naturally? So will it be possible for you? Okay. Okay. So I really doubt. I really doubt means I doubt means that I'm not sure. I really doubt. I really I'm not sure. I think not. So I think it is impossible. In other words, in other words, yeah, a nice phrase. In other words, or yeah. So what I want to say is that you need to do the following. You need to do the following, or you need to do this thing, or these things. Please continue. Please continue, or please go on. What's my first step? What's my first step? Okay? Very nice. The first step is to be able to speak about any subject using simple vocabulary. Okay? So, the first step is to be able to speak about, so you need uh, to speak about any subject, not only traveling, yeah, not only hotel, not only tickets, not only simple things, uh, using simple vocabulary, using simple vocabulary, simple words, phrases, okay? So do I need to memorize lots of sentences and phrases? Or it means do I need to remember lots of, or you can say lots of, or a lot of sentences and phrases? Don't do it. So don't do it. Yeah, you shouldn't do it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. So if you do it, it isn't good. So it isn't rational. There are so many English sentences and so many possible situations. So possible situations, situations which can happen in your life. Okay. So my friend, believe me, you can't remember all of them. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous or it's absurd. So it is impossible. It's impossible. There is no point in doing it. So there is no point in doing it or you can also say there is no use. There is no use in doing it. So it's a waste of time. So why? Why should you do it? So I don't see any reason. I don't see any reason. So it's a huge waste of time. Not just a waste of time, a huge waste of time. So you spend, you can spend your time on it ineffectively, ineffectively, okay? So you need to use a completely different method or approach. Completely different means very, very different. So the opposite method, the opposite method, the opposite approach, okay? So approach is just a, a set of methods, different methods. Okay, so what do I need to do? So what do I need to do? Okay, so really a good question. What do I need to do? You need to make up English sentences by yourself using familiar words and phrases. You need to make up or you need to build English sentences by yourself. So you not you shouldn't, I mean, remember them. You should make up them by yourself using familiar words, so words which you know and phrases, familiar phrases, phrases which you know. It's your main aim. So it's what you should, you know, want to do. So it's your main aim. So it's what you need to reach. Set this aim and achieve it. So you need to have, yeah, this aim. So yeah, you need to say, okay, I need to make up English sentences by yourself using familiar words and phrases and do it. Will it really help me? Will it really help me? Don't you understand? You won't be dependent on books or any other materials. So you won't depend on books or any other materials. It means that everything will be in your head. Oh. I really want it. How can I start speaking this way? 
So we just say start doing speaking this way or how can I start speaking so yeah as I see so really I see it you have this level focus on the grammar and listening to videos which are full of useful phrases for speaking English fluently natural and confidently okay full of which have lots of useful phrases for speaking fluently, naturally and confident like this video, like this video and many other videos on the channel. Like this one? Exactly! Like this one? Exactly! So it just it's a good example. You see that so you have actually you see lots of interesting phrases for speaking and you get lots of interesting information, very lots of important information at the same time. So two things in one, okay? Good! So, do I need to know different English grammar structure? Not only to know, you need to use them. Moreover, which means that I want to add, I also want to say that you need to focus on English vocabulary. Do you know the main difference between a fluent English speaker, I mean basic level, and an advanced English speaker? Yeah, the main difference, the main difference. So. So, how these uh, things differ, how these things differ, okay? Uh, no, please tell me. No, please tell me. It means that I don't know. Please tell me. It's vocabulary as well as confidence in English grammar. As well as means it's confidence too. So, it's vocabulary and also confidence and also confidence as well as means and also and also confidence in English grammar personally it means that I think so it's my idea yes that I don't understand English teachers who say that English grammar is unimportant unimportant means it isn't important for non-native speakers of English so non-native speakers I mean, people who were born, who weren't born in an English-speaking country, who weren't born in England or United States, you know, I think you understand. So, if it isn't important, really, if grammar isn't important, how can I speak English without mistakes? Yeah, a good question. Uh, they say that you need to read more and listen more and your grammar will be improving. Only this way. It can't be so. No way. No way. So it means that uh, I disagree. I totally disagree. So no, no. So okay. So they were born. They were born. I mean, native speakers. Yeah, were born in an English-speaking country, and they listen to English all day, and they speak English all day. They have been doing it since their birth or childhood, yeah? So, really, so they were born, they were born, and then so they started listening a lot, so then they started, you know, speaking when they could do it, and so on. So, it's, you know, it's a very long, it's, you know, it's a very long time, it's a very long time. So, how many hours is it? How many hours is it? Yeah, it's a good question. So, let me count. We have. 24 hours a day so including 8 hours a day for sleep so it's about 16 hours of daily English speaking practice so you know that native speakers yeah so as I see have 16 hours of daily English speaking practice okay but they can't read or listen to something all this time yeah a good point yeah yeah it means that's right uh, you know, it's also a part of English speaking practice, thinking in English. It's a very important thing, so thinking in English. It means that so maybe they don't listen to someone, they don't read, but they think in English. It's also a part of an English speaking practice, yeah, of this English speaking practice. So, as we see, as we see, it's about, so we see it, it's about 16 hours a day. So there are, yeah, normally there are 365 days in a year. And if we multiply, if we multiply 365 by 16, 
will get approximately it means about so maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less uh, 5,800 hours a year they have uh, these English practice they have this English practice also keep in mind so also please uh, understand that they have had this practice for many years not just one year not two years not three years it's a very long time for example 30 years if we multiply yeah this number 5800 by 30 we'll get about 170000 what time yeah hours hours yeah okay hours it's wow wow that's what I'm talking about. It's an incredible amount of time. It's an incredible amount of time, yeah? Do you have this time? Do you have this time? It's an incredible amount of time. It's unbelievable. So it's really, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot, really. Okay? So, of course not. I need to learn English fast. And I need to speak English really well. Being able to build different phrases and sentences by myself. So I need uh, to do it very fast, so I don't have much time. And being able means that so I need to be able to build, to make up different phrases and sentences by myself. So without a book, yeah, without a dictionary, just by myself. Absolutely, absolutely, you got my point. So it means you understood me, you understood me. Is it enough? So is that all or is it enough? Not enough. You need much more than grammar, so you need many other things, not only grammar. English words? Well, you can know 50,000 English words and what, really, and what, so you know them, and what, will you be able to use them correctly and fast? Well, well, if you know just these words, just means only if you know only these words yeah your speech will look very funny and unnatural what do I need to do when you learn English don't focus on English words only yeah focus on English phrases too try to memorize them or try to remember them and use them in your speech that's a good idea and use them in your speech I need to remember English words and phrases so that I can use them in my speech correctly and naturally. And I shouldn't learn English texts, yeah, by heart, right? Okay, so the idea is uh, the following. So I need to remember words and phrases and I shouldn't learn, learn by heart means memorize. I shouldn't memorize or try to learn English texts, right? So that means that uh, if I want, so that, okay, so I need to remember English words and phrases, so be, so that I can use them, so and as a result, I will be able to use them in my speech correctly. So definitely, it means of course, or certainly, I don't understand people who think they can improve English by learning lots of English text really I can't understand so by doing something so when they use this method I often I often think this way I often think this way when I see you know people when they learn lots of English text by heart I often think okay so people open your eyes you need to speak by yourself by yourself so yeah but not just text. You need to make up English phrases by yourself. Even if you learn 1000 English texts, it won't solve your problem. So, okay, and what really? It won't give, it won't give you fluency. You won't be a fluent English speaker. You'll only have a dependence on these texts. Dependence, it means that you only depend on these texts. Okay, so maybe there will be another topic. And what? It's the opposite thing, yeah, which can lead to the opposite effect, yeah, when you try to learn different texts. No, no. So use 
phrases and words and make up all your sentences by yourself. Anything else? Right. You also need to know more conversational phrases, which are designed especially for speaking. Conversational phrases means phrases for conversation, which are designed especially for speaking, which are really for speaking, which are really for speaking. Where can I take them? Where can I take these phrases? Honestly, so I want to be honest with you, taking them isn't enough. You need to meet them in context again and again. These lessons are full of these phrases, aren't they? So really? What useful phrases, what useful English phrases did you meet here, which you can use in your speech? Yeah, good question. Think about it. And always try to keep this idea in mind when you learn English, my friend. So when you read something, when you listen to something, when you see interesting phrases, okay, think, okay, it's a good phrase. And, uh, you know, that I'll use it in my speech. And when you speak, uh, please uh, try to use all these uh, phrases. And if necessary, you know, you can take notes, you can write something down. Okay, my friends, thank you very mu much, yeah, for your help, for your support. I really hope that this lesson is extremely useful. Okay, thanks a lot. And so, really, let's practice. Let's practice speaking English. So, it's very important uh, to have a daily English speaking practice. Thank you very much, my friends. Good luck. Hi, my friends. Welcome to the channel English Professionally. And this video course is advanced speaking in 10 days. So, this video is extremely important. Really, how can you become an advanced speaker in 10 days? So, are you ready to know it? I hope so, okay? So, I have an intermediate level and I'm really determined to reach an advanced level in English speaking. So, intermediate in all that, it means middle. And I'm really determined, yeah, a nice phrase for speaking. I mean, it means that I really want, I'm really determined, I'm really serious about it. I'm really determined to reach or to have an advanced level in English speaking, okay? And so, I have a question, how long will it take me? So, really, how long? So, a week, two weeks, one month, two months or more? Okay, so, taking into account the fact that your level is about intermediate, yeah, a really nice phrase. So, you can say, taking into account, or there is another similar phrase you might know, so it's taken into consideration. Uh, it means that uh, if we consider this fact, so if we uh, have this fact, yeah, that your level is about intermediate, yeah, so we have this fact, and so uh, it can take you no more, it can take you no more than 10 days, yeah, no more than 10 days, really, so if you have a good intermediate level, no more than 10 days, yeah, and if we are talking about uh, speaking, yeah, so you can become an advanced English speaker, okay, good. Incredible, incredible or impossible, unbelievable, okay, don't you believe it? Don't you believe it? I believe it. Why not? I just want to know how I can achieve such a brilliant result. Or how can I have such a brilliant result, such a great result. So, I really want this result and it's a real deadline. So, it's a real deadline. So, if you have a deadline, it means that you need to do something urgently as soon as possible. So, you have a time limit and so you have we have this time limit, yeah, 10 days and it's a real deadline. So, we have a deadline, we have this time limit and we need to do it, okay, urgently. So, as soon as possible. Okay, take it easy. Take it easy, yeah, a nice phrase. It means relax, okay. Relax, take it easy. We'll focus on these tips, yeah? So, we're going to talk about it. So, don't worry. So, everything will be okay. Okay, so, my friends. I wish I knew all these tips. 
Yeah, a great structure. So you know that if you have I wish you use past simple I wish on you, it means that it's just my wish and in fact, I don't know all these tips and I wish on you all these tips and had an advanced level in speaking. Okay? Yeah, okay. The thing is that, or the problem is that, yeah, I'm talking about an advanced level in speaking. If you want to have an advanced level in all possible parts of English. So, or in or in different parts of English, I mean, so I mean it's a nice phrase, so you can use it when you actually give different explanations. So, I mean, grammar, vocabulary, listening and writing, you'll need more time. Okay? So, not only speaking, yeah. So, but you also need to focus maybe on grammar, vocabulary, listening and writing. Yeah, but, you know, we're talking about speaking right now, okay? Good. How long? Maybe a month or a couple of months. A couple of months means two months. If you study really hard and if you are gifted in languages. So, if you are gifted in languages, it means that if you have a talent, if you are a talented person, yeah, concerning uh, languages, so you can have an advanced level. So, in a month or in a couple of months, I mean, if we look at uh, all these aspects, I mean, all these parts, grammar, vocabulary, listening, writing, whatever, so different things, okay? Uh, okay, it suits me, yeah, nice phrase. It suits me, it means it's okay for me, or it's suitable, it's suitable for me, it's okay for me, if I have. An advanced level in speaking, in a couple of weeks, yeah, or in two weeks, I'll be fully satisfied. I'll be fully satisfied, yeah, I'll be really happy, so I'll be absolutely happy, yeah, I'll be fully satisfied, okay? Good, so really good. So I have the same thoughts, or I have the same ideas, I have the same opinion. First of all, yeah, or the first thing, yeah, we learn English for speaking. We learn English for speaking. It's our main priority. It's our main priority. So we put it in the first place. It's the most important thing for us. I mean, to speak English perfectly, like native speakers. Yeah. Okay. Briefly speaking, uh, what are these main tips? So briefly speaking or shortly speaking. So I'll try to be short or I'll try to be brief. What are these main tips? Okay. Incredible as it may seem, your main aim is to make sure you are perfectly aware of one fundamental difference between these two levels, so that you can work out the best strategy possible. Okay, the thing is that, yeah, nice phrase, yeah, the thing is that I understand what it all means. Yeah, what it all means, but I usually speak English much more simply. It means that uh, I don't use, I mean, difficult, you know, structures, uh, vocabulary or words. I just use simple English. Yeah. So if you speak English simply, yeah, simply, you use simple words, simple structures, okay, simple vocabulary, and so on. Okay, so the word simple has nothing to do with an advanced level. Yeah, a very good phrase. So has nothing to do means that actually it isn't about this level. It isn't about this advanced level. So, you know, it's uh, for another level. Yeah, and it has mostly to do with an elementary or basic level. Okay, please keep in mind these uh, two great phrases for speaking. It has nothing to do yeah with an advanced level so it isn't about it and has mostly to do it's about it's mostly about it yeah it has mostly to do with an elementary or basic level yeah if you i mean use like this uh, phrases like this i like i want i think yeah if you or you i mean mostly use present simple past simple future simple only these things yeah or like adjectives like this good bad so it's really very simple it has nothing to do with advanced level yeah it's uh, for this basic level do you see yeah it's pretty clear 
So pretty clear, yeah. Oh, one more interesting phrase, so pretty means quite clear, it's quite clear, so it's really clear, yeah, it's really clear, okay? So, uh, the first tip, yeah, one tip, so the first tip is that you need to know the difference between these two levels, I mean intermediate and advanced, and not just vaguely. So what is vaguely? Vaguely means unclearly. Vaguely means unclearly, so when it isn't uh, so clear for you. Not just vaguely, but on the contrary. But you need to have the opposite, yeah? Think in your mind, so you need to know it very clearly. So really, what's the difference? What's the difference between, I mean, intermediate and advanced level, yeah? What's the difference between these two levels? So you need to know the criteria and uh, then it will be possible for you to think about, I mean, uh, how you can reach this uh, level, how you can reach this level. So let's look at, at this passage, passage uh, one more time. Yeah, passage, I mean, short text and try to understand what it's all about. Yeah, and uh, try to understand what it's all about. So try to understand the meaning, okay? So, okay, let's do it. So, as you see, uh, so I said it, but very shortly, without any explanations at all, yeah? There's, let's have a look at about it one more time. So, you see, incredible as it may seem, incredible as it may seem, okay, so, I mean that, so if you hear this phrase, yeah? Incredible as it may seem, okay, you think, oh, what a nice phrase, what an interesting phrase, what a great phrase. So I think your level is really very high. So I think that you know English very well. So you use, I mean, actually such brilliant or such amazing phrases, incredible as it may seem. It means, uh, in other words, it means that uh, it's hard to believe, it's hard to believe, yeah, incredible as it may seem. So it's really incredible. But just look. I mean, at the way this phrase sounds, okay? So, your main aim, okay? Not just aim, but main aim, main aim. So, as you see, so we use different linking words. Linking words are things which connect, they connect the parts of the sentences, yeah? And uh, they help us, so they connect, they connect uh, the parts of the sentences and they help us actually uh, to structure our ideas, to structure our ideas, so we have a clear structure. And uh, you see, it's more understandable, incredible as it may seem, your main aim is, and you also need to use uh, different adjectives, uh, different adverbs, so it's very important, so you need uh, to focus on adjectives and adverbs, uh, not, I mean, not just good, bad, not, not, not this simple adjective, uh, is to make sure, yeah, and uh, it's uh, a nice phrase, it also, you know, connects parts of these parts of the sentences, yeah, to make sure, in other words, it's to be sure you are perfectly aware of one fundamental difference. Okay, I know that you can say uh, that you know one difference or one big difference. Yeah, if you say, if you know one big difference, it's okay. But you can say not if you know, but if you are aware of. It means that if you know it, if you are perfectly aware, it means if you know it very well. And you know that it's very important to know different adjectives, adverbs, but not separately. You don't need, to, I mean, uh, to have only, I mean, a list of these um, adjectives, but you need to have these phrases. We call them collocations. We call them collocations. So you need to know most common collocations for, I mean, for this advanced level, yeah? And so not big difference, but fundamental difference. It means great difference, most important difference, yeah, uh, between these two levels, so that you can work out, work out the best strategy possible. So work out 
uh, means so that you can have and follow it. So it's about phrasal verbs. So you can't do without you can't do without phrasal verbs. So you just need to have a list of uh, phrasal verbs, maybe uh, 250 phrasal verbs or 300 phrasal verbs. You know that we have these videos and use them in your speech. If you use phrasal verbs, you know, you'll sound really smart. Yeah. And so, you know, actually, it isn't so difficult to understand phrasal verbs. Uh, they are pretty easy. OK, so you can work out the best strategy possible. So you can say the best strategy or the best strategy possible. So it's one more grammar structure. Uh, yeah, so uh, you need uh, to understand uh, grammar too, but not grammar. I mean, elementary grammar, but grammar which uh, can tell me, I mean, and I will understand immediately that your level is advanced to so advanced grammar structures, but not just basic things. OK, so very important things. OK, so really, you need to know these linking words, you need to know different collocations and advanced grammar structures. Yeah, just you have uh, you see these examples. OK, to sum up. Yeah, to sum up, you just need Yeah, to sum up means so in conclusion, you just need to know these lists of most useful phrases for speaking. Yeah, suitable for this level. Suitable for this level means which are OK for this level. It means that, uh, yeah, yeah, just let me explain it. So the problem is that if you start looking for it online, yeah, you often see unnatural, unnatural, so phrase which are so natural and rarely met or rarely used phrases. Yeah, uh, really, uh, we have it. And uh, or for low levels, so you can, you can see lots of phrases, yeah, but mostly for low levels, so not higher than intermediate, yeah, it's a pity, it's eerie, it's really, it's a very sad fact. And uh, secondly, most of these phrases are natural and aren't so good, yeah. So, and uh, let me give you an example of these phrases. What I mean, it's like, you know, incredible, incredible as it may seem, just uh, one more phrase amazing as it may seem so it just uh, a kind of this structure i mean inc uh, incredible as it may seem amazing as it may seem so this structure is for advanced students yeah that's true then to put it uh, to put yeah uh, to put it mildly uh, it means that um, i just uh, don't want um, actually to be rude, but uh, I want to say it, I want to say it politely. So to put it mildly or to say it mildly. So if I want to say it politely or, for example, surprisingly enough, uh, strangely enough and so on. And so if you know uh, these phrases, let's say uh, 100, or I think it's better now, 200 phrases. Yeah, your speaking will be unbelievable. And you know, it won't take you long yeah, just to, to memorize all these phrases and start practicing it yeah, in your uh, daily life, in daily English conversation. Well, so, and so on. Okay, so secondly, you need to know a special list of collocations like, yeah, let, let me give you an example of this collocation. So bitterly disappointed, it means you're, you're really disappointed. Okay, yeah, you can say I'm very sad, I'm upset, I'm so unhappy, but uh, yeah, it's uh, for elementary, mostly for elementary students. So advanced students use more advanced vocabulary and they, uh, the speech is always full of different collocations. Next highly successful. It means very, very successful. So you can say that uh, he's a very successful businessman or he's a highly successful businessman. So why highly? Why successful? How can we translate it? You know, it's really difficult to translate it. Uh, I mean, normally, but the fact is that it sounds very natural in English, highly successful. Or one more thing, yeah, blissfully unaware. So we talked about it. So aware or of, I mean, that you remember this phrase. So if uh, you are perfectly aware of, so if you are aware of something, it means you know it. So I'm aware of this fact. I mean, I know this fact. So I'm aware of the fact that there are lots of great videos on the channel English professionally. Or but the opposite thing is unaware. Yeah, so I was unaware of that fact. I didn't know it or I was blissfully unaware. And you know, it just uh, to make it sound stronger. Okay, good. So is it enough? So if you do it, so if you do it, yeah, good thing. 
uh, so your speaking will get much more advanced yeah and you know one more important point so you don't need to know 30,000 English words or more yeah to sound like an advanced speaker really so students often think okay I learn uh, 20,000 English words 30, 50, 100, so a million yeah and so my level will be you know so high no things don't work this way okay uh, in fact um, yeah you just you think that you just need to have uh, these lists yeah and um, I mean, not the list of English of English words. You need to have this list of English phrases. So don't learn English words. Learn them in context. Learn English phrases, collocations, phrases. Okay, and you can memorize them. I mean, this list of collocations, of phrases, and start using them effectively. Let's say in ten days. So you don't need, you know, one thousand English collocations, but I think uh, two hundred or so will be enough. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so and uh, it's it, it's more than enough, yeah. If you really get down to learning English really seriously, it's bound to happen. Okay, so what? Maybe you want me to repeat it? Okay, uh, no problem. It's about the next useful tips. It's about the next useful tips. Look, it's more than enough. If you really get down to, so get down is a phrasal verb. It means start. It means start. If you really start learning English really seriously, it's bound to happen. Bound to or certain to. You can also hear, yeah, uh, this actually variant certain to. It means, it means that I'm sure it will happen. So you can say I'm sure it will happen or it is certain to happen. So which phrase? actually will sound more advanced if you say I'm sure it will happen or it's bound to happen or it sound it's certain to happen so you see uh, the difference so then you need to use uh, phrases like these ones okay and right yeah you're absolutely right so it's about the next useful tips okay so you need to know what you need to know phrasal verbs and not only to know but to use them in your speech yeah and advanced grammar structures yeah so this thing is about phrase verbs whereas uh, this second thing yeah is about advanced grammar structures and let me tell you what i mean okay so what is it all about i just want to say or i only want to say that students want to know advanced grammar and they spend months on learning some points, maybe some difficult uh, points, yeah, concerning tenses or about tenses or related to tenses, okay? Like present perfect continuous, past perfect uh, continuous. You know that there is some information, I mean, for intermediate level, uh, actually concerning these tenses, there is some information for advanced uh, level, yeah, concerning these uh, tenses and they actually try to learn these exceptions and so on however they don't realize that it isn't for a high level it isn't for a high level really how should i understand it okay so if you use different english tenses so even if you know all possible exceptions you won't sound like an advanced student okay since it means because it's mostly intermediate grammar okay really so you can know you may know I mean all English tenses you know active voice passive voice so you know uh, difficult and uh, actually uh, structures about tenses but it isn't for this advanced level so for this advanced level you need to know other structures and if you actually spend lots of time yeah on learning uh, tenses and so on, you want a sound like an advanced student okay so nevertheless or but if you use advanced grammar structures yeah if you use it in your speech i'll understand i'll yeah okay uh, sorry for my typos yeah so sorry okay i'll understand it at once yeah so it's like you know incredible as it may seem so i hear it yeah and i understand oh 
you know a lot about speaking or it's like you know uh, bound to a center oh you know a lot so you don't know just basic things you understand it at once okay good please explain it okay no problem i can do it one more time i mean if i hear for instance it's bound to happen so for instance means uh, for example it's bound to happen or it's certain to happen I'll understand that you really know uh, and you can use the structures not just for intermediate level, yeah? So your speech should be full of difficult grammar structures, not just tenses. So English grammar isn't only about tenses, so you need to use more advanced structures. Is that all? Not really. So you also need to understand that you have a time limit, so you don't have... Uh, years or decades yeah to learn english if you have just 10 days or even less so you don't have time for reading or listening a lot so you know you can often hear okay you need to read a lot to listen a lot but the question is okay what should i read what should i listen so it will take me actually so long months or maybe years okay and you need to do the following look you need to translate everything you have in your mind so maybe you have something in your mind, some ideas, and you need to translate all these ideas. How? From your mother tongue into English. And English should be in your head all day, but not simple phrases, not simple grammar uh, structures, not simple vocabulary. You, when you think in English or when you translate uh, something from your mother tongue into English, yeah, if you actually um, haven't actually acquired the skill to think in English, uh, use these, use the list we were talking about. So you have, you have this list, I mean, of linking words, so uh, grammar structures, advanced grammar structures, phrasal verbs, and so uh, think in English and translate, but use more difficult things, yeah, uh, which actually have been already mentioned in this great video course. Okay, my, my friends, Thanks a lot for your support, really, thanks a million, and I wish you good luck and good progress. Okay, see you, my friends. Hi, my friends, hi! Welcome to the channel English Professional, and this great video course is for you, yeah. Don't say, I think, 10 great advanced speaking phrases, so I want you to have an advanced level in English. So you can support the idea of this video here on YouTube, you can put a like, you can share it with your friends here and in our group on Facebook. Yeah, thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate it, okay? So, and the problem is, as you might know, most students use this phrase, I think, to express their opinion. Anyway, if you do it, you're more likely to sound like an elementary student, really, it's a fact. So people often say, I think, I think, I think, and they don't realize that mostly elementary students do it. So the question is, what real English phrases should you know for an advanced level? So let's find it out in this video, okay, really. Okay, so the first one, as far as, far as I'm concerned, look, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to improve my speaking skills greatly it means as for me, but actually this phrase, you know, it sounds more advanced as far as I'm concerned. And but don't say only I think really, it's so simple, yeah? As far as I'm concerned, I'd like to improve my speaking skills greatly. So secondly, from my point of view, all these lessons are worth watching. So you can hear from my point of view, and you can also hear phrases like that. So in my opinion, in my opinion, and you know that actually, so I know that lots of students know, in my opinion, but few students, really few students do know this phrase from my point of view. But anyway, I think it sounds fantastic from my point of view. All the lessons, all these lessons are worth watching. Yeah, third, yeah, the third phrase. Incredible as it may seem. Yeah, so a great phrase. So you need to show advanced grammar in your phrases too as it may seem. So maybe it seems incredible. So the idea of this phrase is maybe it seems incredible, okay? So I managed to get the maximum score in the test. So I got, actually I got the best score in the test, but maybe it was difficult. So it's really incredible, it's unbelievable. Say incredible as it may seem, unbelievable as it may seem, a very nice structure, please. 
Yeah, keep it in mind. Or there are similar structures like amazing as it may seem, yeah? Amazing as it may seem, I earned five times more than I expected. So I earned means I got more money, five times more money. Amazing. Or there are similar phrases, surprising as it may seem, strange as it may seem, please use these phrases and it will make your speech more advanced. Next, so speaking from my own experience, so you can say I think or you can share your experience with someone, so speaking from my own experience, I've come to the conclusion that it only comes with practice really a fantastic phrase or you know there are similar phrases like in my experience in my experience or one more great uh, advanced phrase yeah judging from my experience so we can often hear I mean uh, when advanced students uh, say something yeah speaking from my own experience or judging from my experience I've come to the conclusion that it only comes with practice so next I'm totally convinced it means that I'm really sure, yeah? So I'm totally convinced. There is a lot to be done to make our world a better place to live in. So we need to do lots of things to make our world better. Yeah, I'm totally convinced. So, or I'm absolutely sure, or I'm absolutely certain. You know, most students say, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. But not only I'm sure, you need to use, you know, different adverbs, adverbs and uh, not just simple ones, I'm absolutely sure, and adjectives, not just simple adjectives like sure, but more difficult ones like certain, okay, so I'm absolutely sure, I'm absolutely certain you can't miss this opportunity, take this chance, so you need to use this chance, I'm absolutely sure, I'm absolutely certain. Next, to the best of my knowledge, so you can achieve this result in two days if you work hard enough. So, to the best of my knowledge means as far as I know. So, as far as I know, but to the best of my knowledge, you know, it's really a great phrase. You can achieve this result in two days if you work hard enough. And two more. So, I tend to think. So, it's like in my opinion or I think, yeah. So, there is a tendency. It's truly the best channel for learning English. So, you can say I think, but don't say I think. I tend to think, yeah, it's truly the best channel for learning English. Thank you, my friends. And the last m m phrase here, yeah, maybe a difficult one. So, I'm inclined to believe. It also means I believe or I tend to believe. I'm inclined to means I tend to believe. If you're really determined to achieve something and you do your best, it will definitely bear fruit. Okay, it means that uh, you'll have a great result, so it will bear fruit, you do your best when you try to do everything possible. Yeah, so I really hope these phrases are great ones and it will improve your speaking skills greatly so that actually you can become an advanced speaker in English. Yeah, and thanks a lot for your support, thank you very much for your likes, shares and comments here on YouTube and on Facebook. And you can join our group yeah, on Facebook if, if you haven't done it yet. So English professional and you can put a like. Okay, thank you very much my friends for your support, I really appreciate it. So, and if you like, you know, short videos and informative ones, please let me know. So, it would be great or it would be fantastic. So, I'm absolutely sure that's it. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, my friends. Welcome to the channel English Professionally. And this video is how to learn 50,000 English words, right? Not 5,000, but really. 50,000 English words, just imagine it, okay? So really, let's talk about it, so it's a very important subject, okay? So, is it a joke? No, I'm really serious about this idea to learn 50,000 English words, and I know that it's possible, really, I'm serious, it's possible to learn it, and I really think that we need to know, so 50,000 English words and, or more, and I'll tell you why, okay? So, don't you think that it's enough to know, uh, let's say, 2,000, maybe 3,000 English words? Why? Do I need so many words, and how can I really learn it? Really, a good question, okay? So, thanks a lot for your questions. So, you really ask them, in the right place and at the right time, as they say, yeah, a good phrase. In the right place and at the right time, as they say or as people say, yeah. I'll tell you the most important secrets of learning such a number of English words and why 
you really need it. So really, most people don't understand that they need such a number of English words. So they think, okay, so 1000 is enough, 2000 is enough, or 3000 is enough, but in fact, it isn't. And so, okay, let's get it started. Let's get it started. So the thing is, yeah, a nice phrase, the thing is, there is a widespread belief so most people believe so, most people think so. You need to know about 2,000 or 3,000 English words to know English. Yeah, I think that most people tend to think so. The fact is that it's enough for basic purposes. I mean, for basic purposes or for basic aims. Yeah, so if you want to speak English, but you don't want to know English really well, you don't want to know English perfectly. So, and in fact, I have to tell you one more important thing. So, only the knowledge of these words means nothing. Yeah, only the knowledge of these words means nothing. Okay, so you can know 3000, you can know... Uh, 50,000 English words, but only the knowledge of these words, when you know the translation of these words, isn't enough. It's nothing, yeah? And what do you need to do? You need to be able to do much more. In fact, really, in fact, you need to know how to use them. And you should do it spontaneously and naturally. So it's a very important thing. So you need really you need to know how to use them in what context, in what situations, and you should do it naturally and spontaneously like native speakers of English. So people who are born, let's say, in England or America. So good. Why do you think it isn't enough? If you know approximately this number of words, so approximately means about maybe about, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more, this number of words, I mean 2,000 um, and 3,000, and you can use them effectively in your speech, so you can use them quite well in your speech, it means that your level is about intermediate, it's about intermediate, yeah, it's intermediate, it's only this level. To have an advanced level of English, you need to know at least, at least means minimum, 10,000 English words. Yeah, I believe so. At least minimum or more. And uh, basically, I believe so. This number is about, yeah, actually from 10,000 to 30,000 English words for really, for strong advanced students. Yeah, this number of words. So 2,000, 3,000, it's still little. It's just for basic English conversation. Yeah, it isn't enough. Yeah, really, it's an important. Okay, so all right. Why are we talking about 50,000 English words, really? So, we've talked about, you know, 10,000, maybe 30,000, but why, really? Why are we talking about 50,000 English words? Actually, there is one more level which is higher than advanced. So, it's called proficiency. Really? So, it's an interesting fact, again, so most people think that, okay, so I want to know English well, so then they look at different levels, and they say, oh, so I can have an advanced level, so it's a great idea, and so my aim is to reach an advanced level. And so, uh, they think about it quite often, but they don't realize that it isn't the highest level, it isn't the, high le the highest level, there is one more, high level. Yeah, we call it proficiency. So, what does it imply? Or what does it mean? What does it imply or what does it mean? It implies or it means that you know English like an educated native speaker. Yeah, so it's a very important thing, not just like a native speaker, but like an educated native speaker. So, it's really a very high level. It's a completely different level and it's another stage, it's another level, it's another stage. Uh, could you clarify this point or could you say it more clearly? So really, uh, what, it, what does it mean? What does it mean? So to know English like an educated native speakers. And yeah, let's uh, get back uh, to our discussion. Okay, I hope you won't deny the fact. 
you won't deny the fact means you won't say no, yeah? It's very easy to get an elementary level, so it's very easy, yeah, to have a basic level, to have a basic level. So you can do it within a very short period of time. It means that, so really, if you haven't learned English, so you can have a basic level actually in a very short period of time, or within a very short period of time, you can do it very, uh, actually, very fast. So, by the way, it's more difficult to reach the next level. So, it's a fact. So, okay, maybe, you know, it took you, you know, a month or two months or maybe less time to reach an elementary level, yeah? So, you want to, to have the next level pre-intermediate. And the fact is, it's more difficult to reach the next level, which pre-intermediate, as it takes uh, more time and energy, so it can take, you know, uh, three times longer or so, or four times longer. So if you want to have a strong intermediate level, it's another big challenge or it's another big task. Yeah, it's another maybe a uh, big plan problem. So in fact, it's several times more difficult to know English at this level. Yeah, we say at this level, at a certain level. So it's really difficult, yeah, I mean, to get an intermediate level. Yeah, and the most difficult thing is, I mean, uh, to move uh, further or to move ahead to, to get the next level, yeah? So, okay, I got it, so I got it or I understood it. So as far as I understand, so really I understand it this way, it's more and more difficult to get the next level, to get the next level. Yeah, right, yeah? If we try to be realistic, yeah, so let's be honest, yeah, honestly, honestly, or frankly speaking, most students have a pre-intermediate level, so it's a fact, pre-intermediate. So, few people reach an advanced level, so not so many people, so maybe 5%, maybe 3%, you know, it isn't such an easy thing. So, and the question is, why do they have this level? Why do we? Why do they have this pre-intermediate level? Don't they want uh, to have an advanced level? They want, but it's much more difficult. So it's very difficult. I mean, uh, to get a level which um, is higher than intermediate is very difficult. Yeah, because it's much more work. So and really, it's extremely difficult to reach an advanced level. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of it's lots of work. Okay. Good. So, what about proficiency? Yeah, we talked about it. It's much more difficult than having an advanced level. So, really? Okay, so, you know, that uh, you can have an advanced level, but, you know, to reach this level, proficiency, it's, uh, you know, it's such a big challenge. So, it can take you years. It can take you years and many years. And really, how many words? You, you need to know English like an educated native speaker. And how many words do you know in your native language? So how many words? So I think it's more than 100,000, yeah, more. Okay, so you understand that if you want to know English perfectly, to understand everything, so different phrases in any situation, so 99%, 99% or 100%, yeah, not just I mean, not just 90%, 80%, if you understand 80%, 85%, so 90%, you feel uncomfortable because you don't understand some important points. Okay, you understand, I mean, most of this information, but it isn't everything. But if you want to understand everything in any context, so you need to know more. And I believe it's about this number, so 50,000 English words. And you see that to know English perfectly, I mean, 50,000 English words isn't such a big number, and it's real to learn them, really. So you said, so that maybe you know 100,000 words in your native language, so if you want to know English perfectly, so this number is okay. So I see your point, and um, I really want to have this level. What should I do for it? Do I need uh, to take a list of most common uh, 50,000 English words and learn it? So it's really a good question. So most people think, so. okay, I'll take a list of most common English words 
and I learned very quickly. Okay, so we should say the following. Well, it won't help you. It won't help you. Won't means will not. You can refresh your knowledge. So refresh your knowledge means you can remember yeah, uh, what you learned earlier. Looking at a list of most common English words with examples, if you have already met the most part of them. And this method is really good. So uh, let's look actually at our channel. So we have a list, you know, of um, 2000 most common English words, 2500 English words. So the lists are quite good. So if you really, really want, I mean, to refresh your knowledge and you know, maybe 85% and 90%, 80%, but not less. So if you know less, you need to work more and more. So it won't help you. Okay. So especially if it's about this uh, list. I mean, list of 550, yeah, not 550, you know, 1000 English words. And if these words are new for you, are new for you, yeah, if these uh, words are new for you, yeah, so mostly new, it won't lead to anything good. So you won't have a good result. So really, it's, um, I think it is an irrational way of learning English. So you need to learn them only in context, only in context, okay? Are there special techniques or are there special methods so how we can learn it really effectively? I believe I should start reading something in the original and uh, I'll understand all these words in context. Yeah? So most people think so, okay, really? So I just need to take a book yeah, and you know, often we often hear this kind of uh, things as you need to start reading something in the original and you'll understand everything. I don't agree with it. It's a myth, really. This thought is very naive, naive, so it isn't serious, it isn't objective. You can do it for your level, uh, you can do it if your level is advanced, so if your level is advanced, yeah, you can uh, take a book in the original and you can understand a lot, yeah, looking at the context. If not, it won't help you. So um, it will be a complete nightmare, it's a very, it will be a terrible thing. So if not, you need to learn simplified books yeah for each level first you need to start with simplified materials it's an important thing so only this not only and uh, actually to enlarge your vocabulary uh, you need to learn special materials on vocabulary special books on vocabulary so for different levels and for advanced levels for proficiency level two so it's a faster way only reading without explanations without explanations isn't enough so you need to learn special books on vocabulary for higher levels too. So and not only reading, so reading and listening. Okay, so what else? You also need to read a lot. So and that's, now I'd like to give you actually some important tips. I remember that I decided to read, uh, yeah, to read, yeah, one, yeah, to read one English book a week in the original, yeah. So my level was advanced or shown up already minute, but I think it was advanced, yeah, in the original. And I did it. So I chose different materials, so which were interesting for me, only modern English, and I improved my vocabulary greatly. So, and uh, actually, so reading uh, 100 pages a day wasn't impossible. So it was possible to read 100 uh, pages a day. So, it, you know, it was such a big challenge. So I did it. So, okay, so I have a plan. So I have to read 100 pages uh, today. Okay, no problem. So I have to do the same tomorrow. 100 pages again, again, it's a lot. Yeah, just imagine it. So if you look at one month, it's 3000 pages, it's lots of words, lots of vocabulary. And in fact, it accelerated the process of getting to know more English words. So it accelerated the process, yeah, actually of learning these English words. It's an important thing, yeah. Okay, but maybe you have this kind of question. So it's a good idea, but only in theory. So I can't read so many pages a day, so I often hear it. And I can tell you the following, look, I know how you can solve this problem, don't worry. You need to choose a suitable level for you. It's your key to success. You need to meet maximum, yeah, you need to meet maximum 10 new words on one page. So really, 
students often ask me, so what book should I read? So I believe so it's maximum 10 new words on one page, maximum 10 new words, so maybe 5, 10, not more not more if it's more it means yeah it isn't your level it isn't your level and you need to use uh, other materials so and start with adapted materials then choose uh, yeah then choose yeah uh, then choose more and more difficult ones more and more difficult materials so the problem is that you can't read maybe 50 pages a day or 30 pages a day because I mean this information is too difficult for you. Actually choose I mean suitable materials for you. Uh, so and uh, where you will know most of these words, 95% of these words, or maybe 98. And you know it will be a pleasure for you. It will be a pleasure for you to read these materials. Okay, good. So do I need to train a lot? Absolutely. Reading a lot should be your habit. If you think that you can't read a lot because you meet too many new words and you get bored with it very quickly, it's only an excuse, really. Open your eyes, my friend. Open your eyes, okay? So it only means that you've chosen the wrong materials not suitable for your level, really. Because, really, if you understand everything, so the, these materials are quite simple, it will be a pleasure for you to read them. And you read uh, easily, you know, 20 pages a day, 30 pages or 40 pages a day. No problem at all, no problem at all. So, actually, the biggest problem is that most students choose inappropriate materials. So not good enough, yeah? So they want to learn everything and uh, in a day or in two days, no, just, okay, wait a bit. I see. So learning English should be for pleasure. It's an advantage if you can listen to what you read, especially at the beginning of your way. It's an advantage if you can listen to what you read. Yeah, really, it's a big advantage. You need to read and listen, especially at the beginning of your way. And you know, really, I don't understand why students only read if the level is low. They need to listen a lot, listening, listening, and listening. So, and if your level is low, then upper intermediate. So, I believe only reading is so ineffective. You, you actually, you don't really know. So how ineffective it is, listen, listen, listen and listen, listen all the time and read, listen all the time and read, it's very important. So only reading, you know, it's uh, actually, it's something actually which relates to our previous generation, I believe, maybe to the 20th century, but not to the 21st century. So it's an old method of learning, so replace it, listen more and more. And I have to tell you some more very important tips. Really, don't you understand? Only reading is a very slow way. The fact, the fact, yeah, actually, the fact is that if you are going to learn 50,000 English words or more, you need to spend a lot of time on English, a lot of time on it. And obviously, it's clear or it's obvious, you don't have so much time. You don't have so much time, really. It can be a big problem for you. Okay. Oh, where can I find so much time to learn, yeah, so many English words? And um, I can tell you the following. So, what should I do in this case, yeah? Uh, it's your question. And the last, I mean, the most important tip, and few people, maybe almost no one knows it, but you will know it. You need to have perfect listening skills. I mean, to actually to learn these number of words some more, so that you can listen to English while doing something else, Okay, I think you, you knew it. Uh, actually, it isn't a new thing for you, but actually, uh, let's uh, go further. And you need to understand new English words in the context, but not only in the reading context. This way isn't perfect. Your aim is to be able to catch, I mean, to understand the meaning of new words in the listening context. It's a very important thing. So when actually we hear, okay, understand English words in context, in context, oh, students think only about reading context. It's wrong. It's very slow and it isn't so professional because we don't have so much time. So we can't spend hours reading. So, but we have time, you know, to listen 
to actually to different things while doing other things and you need to understand the meaning of new words when you listen is the most important thing and to achieve this you need actually to have an advanced level of English and then you'll be able uh, to do it but you need more and more listening practice yeah, actually keep this very important point in mind so I think no one knows about it but it's really the most important thing so we don't have so much free time so we can't learn we can't learn yeah this 50,000 English words only by reading so we don't have so much time it's impossible but we can do it while listening but we need to listen to more advanced materials and to do this you need to improve your level first listen listen more so yeah learn English words in context but not only in the reading context it's very slow in the listening context both reading and listening context okay my friends I really hope that uh, this information is extremely useful and you'll follow these tips to reach this level proficiency thank you very much my friends and good luck hi this lesson is for advanced students. If you like the idea of this video, you can put a like. Okay? Thanks. So, first of all, I'd like to ask you one interesting question. What is advanced level? How do you understand it? So, what is the difference, for example, between intermediate students and advanced students? So, what's your idea? I know that lots of people think that, first of all, it's grammar. So grammar is in the first place. So some people say that the main difference between intermediate and advanced students is grammar. So do you agree with it or not? So what's your idea? Really, what's your opinion? Actually, that isn't right. Actually, that isn't right. You know, why? Uh, because uh, students uh, who have an, in an upper intermediate level, they know grammar almost perfectly. So grammar isn't in the first place. Grammar is very important, but it isn't in the first place. Okay, so if that's wrong or if that's not absolutely right, so what can be right? So the main difference uh, between upper intermediate and advanced students is vocabulary. Vocabulary, right. Vocabulary is in the first place. You need to know much more words than just upper intermediate students. Yeah, vocabulary. Uh, what else? Yeah, vocabulary, it relates actually to general knowledge. But also speaking is very important. You need to have very strong speaking skills. Right, speaking skills, it's so important. Speaking skills, you need to, to speak English almost perfectly. I mean, quite good pronunciation and uh, without mistakes at all. So if you uh, make mistakes, uh, you know, it can be very small mistakes and from time to time, but not on a regular basis. So that's it. So vocabulary, speaking skills, grammar, yeah, that's important. And uh, what goes without saying is listening skills. Perfect listening skills. Okay, so... Uh, how can you evaluate, I mean, your listening skills? So, uh, when you're uh, listening to a native speaker, do you understand everything? Is it easy for you to do it? Okay, it's easy, it's easy actually to check it. You can turn on the radio or switch on, I mean, some program and just uh, try to understand, I mean, uh, the speech of a native speaker. Do you understand uh, almost everything perfectly or not? So, if not, it's a problem. Yeah, so. Uh, I believe that advanced students understand at least 90% of the speech, so that's the difference. So, actually, to sum up, you need to focus on these four things. Yeah, right. So, what's in the first place is vocabulary, uh, speaking skills, yeah, it's in the second uh, place, listening skills and grammar, all these things are also important. Okay, so, by the way, uh, let me give you an example. So, yeah, uh, just imagine uh, that you have uh, this uh, sentence, for example, uh, he is very sad, he is very sad. So, if uh, someone, uh, I mean, if someone uh, says like this, uh, what level is it? I think it's about elementary level. Okay, uh, let's work a bit and let's make this uh, sentence uh, sound more advanced. So, let's say it, uh, I mean, like an advanced student. Okay, so how can we change it? Okay, so uh, you see there are four things uh, we can't do. We can do nothing about listening skills and uh, speaking skills. Yeah, because we um, don't need to listen, we don't need to speak. So we just need uh, to change our vocabulary uh, and grammar. It's not just a bit, I mean, greatly. Okay, so what's wrong about vocabulary? Yeah, said, you know, it's uh, this word is quite simple. 
Absolutely, this word is quite simple. Okay, what other words? I mean, uh, which I mean uh, the same, um, the same as uh, this word, or which have similar a similar meaning? Uh, can you actually um, come up with? Yeah, come up with. It's a good phrasal verb. Come up with. Uh, okay, so he is very sad, or you can also say uh, he is very unhappy. Yeah, absolutely, he is very sad. Okay, just uh, let's uh, type it here. He is very unhappy. You see, he is very unhappy. Okay, what else? He is very upset. Okay, anyway, that's great. If you know uh, lots of similar uh, words, that's great. But actually, uh, that's almost at the same level. Elementary, pre-intermediate, but it uh, has nothing to do about, uh, I mean, upper intermediate and advanced level. So, uh, what, um, for example, other words uh, can you name or can you remember? Yeah, so, yeah, good question. For example, disappointed, yeah. So, I'm sure that almost all elementary and pre-intermediate students uh, know uh, such words as sad, unhappy, upset, uh, but I'm not sure at all that they know uh, such a word as disappointed, yeah. So, this word is for intermediate, uh, students, yeah, for intermediate students and maybe for upper intermediate students. So if you say he is very disappointed, yes, it will sound more advanced. So yeah, a good alternative. Yes, a good, a very good alternative. So you see, he is, uh, he is uh, very disappointed. He is very disappointed. That's all right. Okay, so anyway, I can't say that uh, this is an advanced level because you know, uh, if you want to be, if you really want to be an advanced student, you need to use different collocations. So, what is a collocation? Uh, it's, in other words, it's a fixed phrase. Uh, for example, he is very disappointed. Yeah, but very again. So you know, we've changed uh, the adjective. So it was sad, and so it got uh, disappointed. Uh, we need uh, to think about other words. Uh, how uh, can we replace uh, uh, these words? For example, very. Yeah, but very again. So actually, uh, that's the same problem. He is very disappointed. But why can't we say, for example, he is bitterly disappointed? He is bitterly disappointed. So. It means that he is really very, very disappointed. He is so disappointed. So his dis uh, his uh, disappointment is really huge. So he is bitterly disappointed. So it's a collocation, bitterly disappointed. And um, actually, uh, in our lessons, so as far as our lessons are concerned, uh, we'll be learning different collocations uh, for advanced uh, students. Yeah, it's an important thing. So he is bitterly uh, disappointed. So I think that. Actually, uh, that's nice. Uh, anyway, uh, advanced students uh, often tend to use different linking words. For example, he is basically disappointed. Uh, so, what is a linking word uh, or a linking phrase? Uh, these are some words which are at the beginning of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. Just additional uh, words you can do without them. Uh, but anyway, you know, if you use them, you will it will sound more natural. That's absolutely right. So, let's come up with these words too. You're absolutely right. Uh, for instance, we can add something like this, from my point of view. So, it seems to me, yeah, it's um, quite a common phrase, it seems to me, but, you know, we can also use from my point of view. From my point of view, from my point of view, ab absolutely right, from my point of view, yeah, from my point of view. So, when we express our point of view, uh, from my point of view, he is a um, bit disappointed. Yeah, that's nice. So you see that we changed. Actually, we changed uh, the adjective. Uh, we've used um, one interesting collocation, bitterly disappointed, and we have added uh, one linking phrase. From my point of view, he is bitterly disappointed. I think that you see the difference. Yeah, yeah. he is very sad. From my point of view, he is bitterly disappointed. Uh, actually, advanced students uh, pronounce it um, more quickly and more naturally. Usually. Elementary print intermediate students say he is very sad. He is very sad. Advanced students they 
uh, don't make mistakes as a rule, I mean, uh, such big mistakes. So from my point of view, he's bitly disappointed. From my point of view, he's bitly uh, disappointed. Yeah, that's nice. So what about grammar? So really, you need to, uh, to use more advanced structures. Yeah, that's that's now from my point of view, he's bitly disappointed. Okay, but anyway, uh, let's look at one more example. Uh, for instance, uh, actually, uh, you uh, can see a statement, such a statement as so money is everything money is everything and you need to say something about it so do you agree or uh, for example do you agree or disagree with this statement money is everything so just uh, let's uh, compare uh, two possible answers of elementary students and more advanced students okay so i think uh, i think that's right i think that's right if you have money if you have money, if you have money, uh, you can buy, uh, you can buy a lot of things. Uh, if you have money, you can uh, buy a lot of uh, things. Yeah, so I want to have more money. I want uh, to have more money. So this is one possible uh, answer. I want to have more money. So is this answer good or bad? Is this answer good or bad? So I think, uh, why not? It sounds quite good. Uh, can you spot uh, some mistakes uh, in these sentences? Spot means can you find this, some mistakes in these sentences? So let's have a look at all these sentences or at all these words one more time. So you see, money is everything. And uh, one possible answer, I think that's right. If you have money, you can buy a lot of things. I want to have more money. Yeah, actually, that's a great achievement. It's a huge achievement, you know, or when we speak English without mistakes. Actually, that's absolutely great, really. Uh, when we try to speak English absolutely correctly, and in fact, that's it. Actually, uh, uh, these all the sentences are correct. Uh, the idea is uh, how to make it sound more advanced. Okay, I think that that's right. Yeah, actually, uh, let's uh, make this, uh, you know, for example, an advanced level or at least upper intermediate level or higher. So money is everything. So we'll be using just uh, the same ideas, but we'll try. I will be saying it uh, another way. So let's do it anyway. So I think that's right. So, for example, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, it's another phrase for as for me. Uh, you know, we often hear as for me, as for me, as for me, as for me, especially among Russian students. But okay, you can replace uh, the sentence. And so I think uh, that's quite a good idea if you uh, start using this one. So as far as I'm concerned. So this phrase is more advanced. As far as I'm concerned, you see. As far as I'm concerned. So it's the same as I think, as far as I'm concerned. But you see actually the difference. Yeah, I think and as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, actually it's uh, quite another level. Uh, anyway, so as far as I'm concerned, uh, you can add not just I think, yeah, you can say that uh, I really think so, I believe, or uh, you need to use more advanced vocabulary. So what words can you use instead of I think, I believe, uh, it seems to me, okay, so really, uh, what are your ideas about all this? For instance, you can say I'm convinced. Uh, convinced uh, means I really uh, think so. Convinced, I'm con I'm I'm sure or I'm convinced. Yeah, I'm absolutely convinced. I'm absolutely convinced. It means that I'm absolutely sure. I'm absolutely convinced. But convinced, uh, you know, uh, this word uh, actually uh, sounds more stronger. So we put more emphasis on uh, this idea. Okay, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm absolutely uh, convinced that I'm absolutely uh, convinced. Uh, that, uh, you know, yeah, we need to do some phrasal fra fra verbs, uh, collocations, so that we can't do without money. It means that uh, we can't live without money, we can't do. Do without is a phrasal verb, so really, if you start using uh, phrasal verbs in this speech, I'll be so happy for you. So, you see, I'm absolutely convinced that we can't do without money, that we can't do uh, without money, we can't do without money, yeah, so then we can use, uh, for instance, uh, one Lincoln, one more Lincoln phrase. So, however, uh, we can't do without money. Uh, however, 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 and then you can uh, develop this idea or say something like this. Uh, however, uh, to tell you the truth, 
to tell you the truth or to be honest to tell you the truth uh, to tell you the truth I wouldn't put it in the first place to tell you the truth uh, I wouldn't uh, put it in the first place for several reasons I wouldn't put it I wouldn't put it I wouldn't put it in the first place I wouldn't put it uh, in the first place I wouldn't put it in the first place in the first place uh, for several reasons for several reasons uh, then you can add something like this or you can use uh, some you know very common expressions for example you might think you can use model verbs why not for instance you might think uh, you might think that money is power yeah actually money is power it's actually a lot so yeah we just you know we we're using you can buy a lot of things but you might think that money is power it's i think so interesting such an amazing phrase so really you might think that money is power you might think that money is uh, power you might uh, think that money is power and then actually you develop your ideas develop and develop so you just need to use more vocabulary and so i think uh if you ask my advice, you just need to enlarge your vocabulary, to widen your vocabulary. Uh, if your actually vocabulary gets uh, stronger, you know, wider, richer, larger, I think that you'll do really, you'll do a lot. So it's what you exactly need. Okay, it is the first lesson, and in the next lessons we'll be covering more vocabulary, uh, different phrases, uh, collocations and so uh, different tips uh, for speaking and something like that. So if you really like this video, you can support it and we'll continue making more and more lessons in English. So if you really need it, it's up to you. Okay, by the way, uh, let's repeat everything. Okay, so general revision. Money is everything. I think that's right. If you have money, you can buy a lot of things. I want to have more money. Yeah, just the first way and the second way. That's not the second alternative, the second option. So whatever. As far as I'm concerned, I'm absolutely convinced that we can't do without money. However, to tell the truth, I wouldn't put it in the first place for some reasons. You might think that money is power. A by the way or something like this and you continue 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 and really you can continue this idea and write something about this uh, in the comments so it would be interesting for all of us i'm quite sure okay i think that uh, we don't need uh, any kind of repetition revision just we need to um, actually to freak through uh, all this information one more time in order to make sure that everything is correct and just uh, that, that's it because really i don't like to make mistakes yeah but actually i try to avoid making mistakes uh, anyway just uh, i need um uh, to pay more attention to misprints, if any. Okay, so vocabulary, speaking skills, listening skills, and grammar, a very important thing. So focus on these things, please. So vocabulary is in the first place. I'm really absolutely sure that's it. Okay, he is very sad and happy, upset, disappointed. It's mostly for elementary students, pretty intimidated. So if you want to make it more advanced, you can say, for instance, from my point of view, he is bitterly disappointed. Yeah, actually, bitterly disappointed is a very common collocation. Okay, money is everything. I think that's right. If you have money, you can buy a lot of things. I want to have more money. Yeah, so the first, actually, uh, variant and the second variant, as far as I'm concerned, I'm absolutely convinced that we can't do without money. However, to tell you the truth, I won't put it in the first place for several reasons. You might think that money is power and so on. Yeah, okay, I wish you good luck and see you soon in the next videos. Bye-bye, my friends. Hi, how's life? I think everything's okay and really let's continue learning English together. I think that we'll have a great time together and this lesson is mostly suitable for advanced students. Absolutely correct. So, you know, in the last lesson, or we can put it another way as far as our last lesson is concerned, we're talking about collocations that they can do a lot for you if you really want to improve your vocabulary, to enrich your vocabulary, to make it larger and if you're really determined to make it sound more natural. Yes, that's absolutely correct. So, and if you ask me uh, to make more informative lessons, so I think that I followed your advice and actually let's have a look at a list of collocations. I prepared 15 collocations for you, which can be extremely useful in your daily speech. So, the first collocations are with highly. Highly unlikely, it means highly improbable or the chances are very low that it will happen. For example, it's highly unlikely uh, that this channel will reach 1 billion subscribers 
or I mean that's it's almost impossible or in fact it's impossible the channels are very low or you can say that it's kind of likely that the channel will reach 1 million subscribers next year yeah you can't deny the fact that the popularity of the channel is growing you see it very clearly that and of course it's you know because of you you really help a lot and I highly appreciate it yeah that's another collocation that highly highly appreciate it but it's really highly unlikely that this channel will reach 1 million subscribers next year I don't think so and I think you have uh, the same ideas right so the next location is highly competitive so what highly competitive niches markets or industries uh, you can name so the competition uh, the level of competition in these niches industries are so high that just it uh, something unimaginable so highly competitive you know and if I'm thinking about doing business I think that I wouldn't start I mean, start up my company in a highly competitive niche because I don't want, you know, to lose mo to lose money. I want uh, to build a profitable business. Next, si highly successful. You know, what highly successful businessman can you name, such as Bill Gates, or I mean, some businessmen uh, who founded such companies as Microsoft, Google, Coca-Cola. We don't know their names. Uh, not all their names, but we know the names of these companies because they actually built great brands. Next controversial so highly controversial things these things are unclear we don't know what is right what is wrong so highly controversial we can't actually uh, say it exactly so as as with the right it's absolutely correct so or we know all the information about the subject highly controversial uh, things they actually they need a lot of time to be discussed and you know we need more information to shed more light on it. And then highly recommend. You can highly recommend this channel. If you really like, if you really enjoy this channel, English Galaxy, you can highly recommend it. So if you do it, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, highly profitable. Yeah, as we already said, you need to build a highly profitable business. You know, you know why most companies fail because they become unprofitable. Yeah, we can use such a prefix as un unprofitable. But if you are going to become a highly successful businessman, highly successful businessman, we need to build highly profitable uh, companies, highly profitable business. And surely, or sh uh, it goes without saying, we need to use highly methods of achieving it, highly effective methods. Yeah, to be more exact, highly effective methods, which can have a very good effect on our business, highly effective ways. And you know, if we look at learning English, or we can use such a phrase as, as far as learning English is concerned, we need to use highly effective ways of improving improving our English and I think that this channel uh, exactly is exactly what you need it suits you you know because you can uh, have a look at different lessons for levels elementary beginner pre intermediate intermediate and advanced and even super advanced okay so this group of collocations with highly highly unlikely so you know that this channel is it's highly unlikely that this channel will reach uh, 1 million subscribers uh, next year highly competitive I wouldn't like to or wouldn't dare uh, to I mean to start our business or we can say to start up our company in highly competitive market successful I think that we need to be highly successful business and we are really determined uh, to build a highly profitable business I don't like uh, talking about controversial things yeah because it can lead uh, to disagreement I, I actually I don't like fall, falling out fallout it means uh, quarrel yeah recommend I highly recommend the channel English Galaxy yeah it's a great channel and effective you know we are tight we are fed up with learning English ineffectively using ineffective methods we need highly effective highly effective methods of learning English and I think that's what you need yeah let's go on by the way okay well done and I have a special task for you I really hope that you understood the meaning of these collocations. I'll be asking you some questions in English. Please write the answers to these questions in the comments. I'll be using these collocations, which you've just studied. Okay, highly unlikely. What things do you think are highly unlikely to happen? Competitive. What highly competitive niches can you name? Successful. What highly successful people do you know? Can you give their names? Controversial. Do you like talking about highly controversial things? Highly recommend. Do you think you can highly recommend the channel English Galaxy? Profitable. What highly profitable companies do you know? Effective. 
What highly effective methods of learning English would you recommend using? Right. So a very good task. Okay. Let's look at the next collocations. They are with the word bitterly. So you can say I am bitterly disappointed. It means that you are full of huge disappointment. You can't hide it. You are full of negative feelings, emotions. If you say just I am very sad. I am very upset. You know, it won't express the meaning of the collocation bitterly disappointed because it sounds much stronger. And regret. You can also say I bitterly regret. I bitterly regret doing it. So the main difference, actually, between the collocations or between the words uh, dis um, bitterly or sorry, disappointed and regret is that the word regret sounds more formal. So we usually use it in more formal context. So that's the difference. So and I have a task for you too. So, so please write in the comments when you were bitterly disappointed last time, or and what you bitterly regretted doing last time. So the things are also of great importance. I mean, so the more you write, the more you speak, the better it is for you. And I think that we need to train these collocations. I think you'll support it and do this task. Okay, well done. Let's go on. And the next collocations are with the word or with the actually word yes, exactly deeply. Deeply regret. So we can say I bitterly regret or I deeply regret. So you can write the same. So when were, uh, when did you deeply regret doing something last time? Shocked. When were deeply shocked last time? Deeply means greatly. Deeply concerned. If you're deeply concerned about something, it means that you're really worried about that. Or when were you deeply concerned about, for example, the environmental problems and ashamed? So when were you deeply ashamed last time? So when you felt such a great shame that you couldn't hide it, you were so embarrassed, so and you were the one to blame. Yeah, so let's repeat these questions. So deeply, what did you deeply regret or when? Yeah, exactly. What or when? So what's better to ask? I think that uh, what? What did you deeply regret doing last time? Shocked. When were you deeply shocked last time? Concerned. So, uh, what were you deeply concerned about last time and ashamed? Uh, when were you deeply ashamed last time and say why? So you can, for instance, uh, start. I was deeply shocked by or with or I was deeply shocked when and please uh, continue these sentences. Okay, well done. And let's look at two more collocations with the word ridiculously. Ridiculously means very. For instance, you can say that something is ridiculously expensive. It means that it's really so expensive. Or it's ridiculously easy. It's so easy. So please uh, think what things can be ridiculously expensive and what things can be ridiculously easy. And I have special task for you. So please write in the comments. Yeah, that's it. Uh, what things are ridiculously expensive. For instance, I'm absolutely convinced that to uh, buy a flat in the center of sm in Moscow, even you know a small one, is ridiculously expensive. That you know just you know that less than one percent of people can afford uh, to buy it, to buy a flat in the center of Moscow. You know how much money, how much it costs to do it. So it's something unimaginable. Yeah, and so please name other ridiculously expensive things. So and easy. So is English easier or difficult? And it's really very interesting uh, to hear from you, to know your point of view. So is English really easy? Uh, on the contrary, it's so complicated, it's so difficult uh, that uh, people uh, don't understand the real essence of this language. So please uh, do it and we're well, looking forward to your reply, to your comments, to your support, to your likes. Okay, whatever. So the future of this playlist is in your hands. So if you like it, please support. Write something and we'll continue making this series. Okay, thanks for attention. See you. Bye bye.